this client will look at you and say, well, we'd just like to be with you because you are, you've got what they want. Not the vacuum cleaner so much. That can be also exchange hands. But you are relaxed, you're calm, you're free. You are enlightened because you've worked on yourself. You visualized yourself as complete and whole. And you go and visit whoever you go and visit and this person is going to think, wow, whatever you got, I want. You say, yeah, I've got the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, but he says, no, I want more than that. And you say, okay, well, and you'll give of yourself, you see. And you're not coercing. We've got to be so careful because the old beta thing with sales spiels and all that, you know, tell them what color they want, what, get what color they want, trick them, you know, get them to sign. And then you walk out with their signature and you've sold them something they don't even want or they can't afford. You see, that's, that's not doing... You shouldn't be a salesman if you're doing that. But if you've got a genuine product that's going to help the person, it's not going to help everybody. But you can help everybody. There's a story, this is a story of the Buddha, Siddhartha, before he became the Buddha. I don't know if anyone's read the book, Siddhartha. Siddhartha went and he was a prince, and it's the same as the prodigal son story, really. But he was a prince and he didn't want to just sit and inherit the kingdom, he wanted to go and experience life. So he, you know, he went out and experience the world, which we all did, by the way. That's what we all do. So at one phase he becomes a salesperson. Okay, and he joins this merchant and he says, okay, you know, I'll, I'll work for you, I'll be a salesman, whatever, I just want that experience. So his boss says, okay, you take this donkey, pile it up with carpets, and you go on this week-long trip and you sell the carpets. That's your job. So he goes, the first week, and he comes back and the boss runs out and says, well, how did you do? I see you back. He says, I did fantastic. I made so many friends and I met these wonderful people and Mary's now having a baby next week. And, and he met all these people. And the boss said, how many carpets did you sell? He said, oh, I think I sold one to, to old Joe. And you know, his crop's just coming up now. And, and you know, he took a carpet, that's right. But no, 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 you're supposed to sell all the carpets. And he says, oh, okay. And he went out again, and he came back again, and this time he sold a couple of carpets, and, and the boss says, no, no, this is not good enough, you must get them to sign. Okay, he went out again, and he just made more friends. By the time he got back a third time, and this is a true story about the Buddha, the time he got, the time he got back the third time, this merchant comes running out there, he's beaming, he says, you're amazing. We sold out. All those friends you made on the other trips came out looking for you and they, they wanted carpets, but they also wanted to see you. They want you to go and visit them and take them whatever you got, you know. Just, they just want an excuse to just see you and we've sold out. You're the best salesman I've ever had. And he said, oh, okay. And how's, how, has Mary had a baby yet? <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll, yeah, so, that's how it works. You see, so... Your prime objective should not be to make money out of people. Because people aren't fools. Your prime objective is to make friends, is to meet people. And it's a nice job being a salesperson. And go out and meet people and make friends. And help them. Just in who you are and in a product that can better their lives. And if they don't buy then, because they don't want a vacuum cleaner, whatever it is, they'll remember you for the rest of your life. And when they do want a vacuum cleaner, be the, you'll be the first one that they phone. And if their friends want a vacuum cleaner, they'll give you that. They'll get them on to you. That's the way to do it. But if you're going out there to make money out of people, first of all, you don't know how the universe works, and people get wise to that, and they don't want to be coerced. But they do want to be helped. So if that's your prime objective, you'll be the best salesman there is. You'll be the top of the board. So visualize yourself at the top, but remember these are the principles. It's not just be at the top to be at the top. It's because you want to be more of who you really are. And you've got a wonderful job there to, to do that. Okay, so you're visualizing the white frame, your, your name at the top of the board because that signifies it. You can visualize yourself in your new car that you can now afford and visualize yourself looking forward to picking up that phone to contact your friend to see how they're doing, which is your client, which will put in another order while you're talking to them. 
So you don't put the cart before the horse. You don't think of the money first. You think of the ability to share and to help people be bet better off. And of course, anybody, you, if anybody comes to you and they're genuine like that and they really want to help you, you've got a friend for life and everybody needs help. And they're going to think of you when they need help or they need a vacuum cleaner. So, you can see that that's the way it works. Alright, have we all got our bad habit? And, you know, you can, you can say that, you know, the fact that you're putting off picking up the phone as a salesperson because you're scared of that rebuttal, that rejection. You're not going to get a rejection now. How can your friend reject you? He might not buy your vacuum cleaner then, but he's your friend. So, you know, you can... So, that's your bad habit of thinking of the money first and in the white frame you see yourself having all these friends that you're going to help and the way you chop your wood and carry your water is to supply people with vacuum cleaners whatever and you can do that in your business too you see you or your company if it's your own business obviously you know you've got to put that energy in and you've got to employ yourself in that business but if you're employed by somebody else don't have that mentality, that pathetic mentality, which when I worked in England when I was a hippie, it was like that. You only do what you pay to do and no more. You don't go that extra mile. If you work for a company, let that be your company. You know, let, you might work for Lever Brothers or something, a big company, and you're starting off at the bottom. Make that your company. Make these your friends. 